Пропонуємо вам подивитися інтерв'ю нашої кореспондентки «Контактник Щен» Ніколь Гупало з Маркусом Колхою, експертом з цифрової безпеки та дезінформації на тему фальшивих новин та як розуміти сьогоднішню ситуацію навколо екселації можливості вторгнення російських військ на територію України. З ініціативи нашої програми «Контакт Некщен» та Української шкільної ради при КУК Торонто 26 лютого Маркус Колга проведе лекцію для учнів Українознавства Суботніх шкіл Канади на тему «Фальшиві новини» та як їх розпізнавати. Soon you'll be speaking to students of Ukrainian Saturday courses on the topic of how to distinguish fake news from real news. Where does the term fake news come from? Well, fake news is, is a term that uh, was once used to describe information, um, news that was false, um, you know, lies that were injected into news. We don't really use the term fake news very much nowadays. Um, we prefer to use the term disinformation or misinformation. Um, disinformation is, is information that's manipulated, that's changed and like I said, injected with lies in order to try and make people believe a lie or something that's false. Um, whereas misinformation is information that's maybe incorrect, but um, people don't spread it in order to deceive or fool people. Um, and so that's the term we use uh, for, for that sort of information. We don't really use fake news anymore, though. Okay, great to know. Thank you for that. How can we learn to verify the accuracy of the information we read? especially these days when we hear about the escalation of Russian aggression towards Ukraine? Sure, that's a great question, Nicole. Um, we need to be really careful when we're reading media, when we're on social media, on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, or any one of those platforms, to make sure that the information that we see, that we don't just believe all of it. Um, you know, if, if there's a headline that sounds too good to be true, you know, there's a chance that somebody might be trying to fool you. They might be trying to get try, try to get you to click on a on a link to a website that's trying to sell you something, or that might try to deceive you. So when we see those that sort of information being um, uh, shown to us on social media, we should always check where it's coming from, who's sharing it, and where that click leads us to. And uh, if you don't recognize that website, it's probably better to, to not click on it. And if it seems to be taking you to some sort of a new site where you know, you're not too sure of that information, it's always good to check that headline, um, search it in Google and see if anyone else is talking about it and look for those sources that are, you know, uh, trusted, you know, uh, whether it's the CBC or the Globe and Mail or, or one of those established professional media outlets, um, that'll tell you if the story is real or not. What informational sources do you advise to review daily for young people interested in the world of politics? Well, that's also a very good question, Nicole. Um, you know, I, I always say that the best antidote for fake news or disinformation is a newspaper subscription or a magazine. I know that a lot of younger people don't necessarily read the newspaper nowadays, but looking at a source like the Globe and Mail or the Toronto Star, um, the National Post, these are established Canadian media outlets who have professional journalism journalists working for them. They also have policies to make sure that those journalists, when they're reporting on the news, that they base it on real facts and verifiable facts. Other platforms that don't have necessar necessarily have professional journalists may not have that same sort of accuracy. So I would recommend any one of those newspapers, McLean's, the CBC, CTV, um, Rogers Omni is also a really great place for news, especially for Ukrainian language news. Great, I will definitely be using that. <laughs> um, <laughs> What are reliable Ukrainian and or East European sources of information? Uh, also a very good question. Um, the sources, at least for in English language, are, are somewhat limited. Um, where I usually go to check out news on what's happening in Ukraine right now, in fact, um, I check out, uh, you know, the BBC is a good source. Um, CNN has been doing a lot of good uh, reporting from there. Um, one of the better sources is Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, RFERL.org. Uh, this is a, a website that does a lot of, has a lot of reporters 
and it does a lot of really trustworthy, very good reporting on uh, on what's happening uh, in, in Ukraine right now. And there are other good sources too. I think the Kiev Independent, unfortunately, the Kiev Post is now uh, has, has shut down, but uh, the Kiev Independent seems to be doing some very good reporting too. Mm, that's good to know. Um, what advice would you give to students who want to become political observers? Mm. Um, I would say that if you want to become a political observer, especially when it comes to the geopolitical situation, I know a lot of young Ukrainians are very interested in what's happening there, what's happening in Russia, and probably around Central and Eastern Europe, um, I would say read a lot. Um, Go to websites like uh, the Atlantic Council, um, SIPA, which is the Center for European Policy Analysis. Um, These sites will give you in-depth information about what's going on real in-depth analysis and it'll give you some some very good background and army with the resources that you need to understand what you're seeing uh in the news i would also recommend uh coming checking out um the mcdonald laurie institute's website that's the think tank that i'm involved with we also cover a lot of very good uh, uh a, a lot of that area and and publish a lot of very good analysis thank you for that as well um, what are your thoughts on the development of events in Ukraine in the near future? I think al- along with uh, most of the Ukrainian community, and I think the Central and Eastern European communities in Canada, um, I'm deeply worried about what we're seeing. Uh, there's a lot of disinformation uh, floating around. Uh, Moscow is publishing a lot of uh, false uh, information about what's happening in Donbass. Um, who's shelling who, Um, they're trying to make Canadians and all of us believe uh, that Ukraine is looking to start a war. Uh, And they're looking for any excuse, that is Vladimir Putin is looking for any excuse uh, to occupy, occupy Donbass. And so I'm checking all of my sources. I'm on Twitter every, uh, every minute right now uh, and every hour uh, trying to find the the most up-to-date information with what's happening. Um, but we need to be prepared for the worst. And if that happens, we all need to advocate uh, for Ukraine, as we're do- all doing right now, uh, because uh, if we don't do that, um, all the other Central and Eastern European countries that are friends with Ukraine could be next, um, along with uh, our own democracy here in Canada. So it's very important that we all uh, pay attention to what's going on and, uh, and stand up for Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that amazing insight. And as well, thank you for this interview. Looking forward to joining the the school next weekend to talk about uh, disinformation. Thank you for having me on. Of course. um, This was a conversation with Marcus Kolka, an international award-winning documentary filmmaker, journalist, digital communications strategist, and a leading Canadian expert on Russian, Central, and East European issues. I'm Nicole Popalo from Contact Next Generation. (laughs) 